The Real George Orwell. Burma by Mike Walker. With Joseph Milson as Eric Blair. Summer of 1922. I was 20. I had no idea of what I wanted to do in this world, so in a way it seemed as if I might do anything at all. I even thought that Jacintha and I... Well, well, she was 22 and our families had been friends since forever. What I didn't know then was that in this world... Even in that unforgettable magic summer, nothing is forever. Everything changes. I say, do you, do you mind if I join you? Why should I mind, Eric? And why ask? You never ask. You never asked before. I don't know. It just seemed right somehow. Today, I mean. Well, obviously. You could hardly mean any other day, could you? It's glorious, isn't it? It's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, I, I don't understand you at all, Jacintha. I should hope you never understand me. I would hate to be understood. Even, even by someone who actually rather... I, I mean, you know... Uh... Actually not, but then I never pretended to understand you, Eric. Would you like some lemonade? It might help cool your brain. No, not really. I don't like lemonade, but then you, you know I don't like lemonade. I never drink lemonade. I don't... You don't understand it at all? <laughs> You're amazing, Sini. Do you want to see Prosper? Uh, he's gone off to Oxford, I'm afraid, to look over a college with a friend who's going up next year. Actually, I, I knew that. He told me, yes. Um, no, I, I, I wanted, um, wanted to, to, to see... Uh... You know, you were more entertaining when you used to stand on your head. <laughs> I was 12 years old. And you said you get noticed, noticed more, more if you stand, stand on your head, head than if you're, you're the right way, right way up. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and then you told us that you were going to be a famous author one day. Well, I... But you see, Eric, this is one day. And you're not even going to university. Well, Somerset Maugham didn't go to university. Oh, he was a doctor, so it's not the same thing at all. That doesn't matter. Well, if that doesn't matter, I'd like to know what does. Well, don't you see, Sini, it's terribly important that that you believe in me. We all believed in you, Eric. No, I, I mean that you... Um... Why should I believe in E.A. Blair, the famous author? <laughs> oh, you're not going to stand on your head again, are you? Well, I, I did write a lot of stories. You told a lot of stories. We used to read together. Don't you remember? Lying amongst the bluebells. Of course I remember. <laughs> Why wouldn't I remember E.A. Blair, the famous reader amongst the blue Do stop it, Sini. I'm trying to be serious. I thought you always tried to be serious, Eric. I'm going to Burma. Burma? I'm going to be an assistant superintendent in the police force. A policeman? Well, uh, in effect, yes. Are you aware that a policeman's lot is not a happy one? And I should think exceptionally not so in Burma. Jacintha, this is not a comedy by Oscar Wilde. More like a tragedy by the famous author E.A. Blair. Oh, I do wish you'd stop that. I do wish you would. We were going to be intellectuals together, Eric. Your books, my poetry, and the magazine we would edit. We can and... still be together, Sini. Sending each other poems around the world. I did mean it. The poem I sent. Remember? Uh, friendship and love are closely entwined. My heart belongs to your befriending mind. But something, something shadows fall. My love can't reach your heedless heart at all. By light too bright, it's best to rest in shade. Or oh, something, something like that. <laughs> That's us really, isn't it? Are you sure you don't want a drink? Can't you see, Sini? I, I'm asking you to marry me. <gasps> what? Come to Burma with me. Oh, somehow that doesn't sound quite as alluring as come to Balliol with me and we'll start a poetry magazine. Stop it, stop it, please. Just be serious for once. Oh, can't you see, Eric? Dear, dear Eric, I am trying to be serious and kind and caring and... Not loving. I do like you. 
We've known each other so long. All the things we've done and read together, it would be like marrying my brother. Uh, and what a waste that would be of two ardent hearts. Don't you see, Sini? I love you. I love you, and... and... and I want you. Eric, stop it. Let me go now. You tried that once, and you know, we both know it didn't work, because it was wrong. It was as wrong as if we really had been brother and sister. I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd never... What? Met me? I don't know, see. I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't even know if what I'm thinking or feeling is any realer than any one of a hundred books we've read together. You know, at Eton, that last term... I gave a talk to the Literary Society on Robert Louis Stevenson's The, the Suicide Club, and I, I, I sometimes wonder if going to Burma is like Stevenson's story, and I'm Prince Florizel, putting my life at risk so I can know something, so I can know something utterly, totally real, as real as the steel muzzle of a revolver pressed against my skull. Nothing is forever. Everything changes, and I went to Burma, and in a way, nothing changed at all. The Empire was as the Empire did, and I was its very good servant. I was its very good servant for almost four years, until... I say, Blair, there's an elephant gone loco in the bazaar. I say, really? Brown niggers all running mad, whole place in an uproar. I think they enjoy it when, when things go wrong. They love to see us with our pants down. Well, not today. The super wants you to sort it out chop-chop, old man. Me? Well, you're the DS. Where's the beast's trainer, for goodness sake? Wait, find the blasted Mahout and Jumbo will go home happy. Oh, not this one. Mahout went looking in the wrong place. If you ask me, the beggar was yellow, but then most of them are. And they say the bloody thing's in must. But if they'll only leave it be, it'll calm down in a day or so. Stay out of the way, let it trample a few stray dogs, it'll settle. I know that, and you know that, but the super wants us to deal with the thing. It doesn't look good when we do nothing. Well, even if doing something doesn't really help. What's that got to do with it? Oh. But besides, it'll be a lark, <laughs> shooting an elephant. <laughs> you'll be able to hang the head on your study wall back home in Blighty and impress the popsies no end. I suppose so. Hold on. Uh, you were... Uh, you think a Winchester 44 will do it? Well, it worked for Buffalo Bill, didn't it? No, I, I think he used a Sharps Express, at least according to Boy's own thrilling tales of the Wild West. Uh, no, never mind, to... Buffalo Bill. Right. Do this and they'll be calling you Elephant Eric. <gasps> oh, come on! Inspector Ernest D'Souza, I have the honour to be assisting you finding... Yes, a... yes, 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 yes. Where is it? Now, that is not known at present. Oh, come on, man. It's as big as an elephant. <laughs> um, what, what was the last sighting, Inspector? It overturned the municipal rubbish cart. Good, good Lord. And, and that, that was where? To the east. To the east? Ah, and, and then to the west, a hut was destroyed. To the north and south, I suppose. It has caused much trouble. They will tell you, much trouble for people. Doesn't look as if it's that much trouble for anyone now, Inspector. Are you, are you sure the beast hasn't just calmed down? The beast is in must. It was in must, but it will calm down if we leave it be. Do you see, Inspector? No, 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 no not possible. The elephant must be dealt with. Well, first we have to find the bloody thing. Has anyone actually seen it? You know how stories just come out of nowhere with these people. I suggest we pack it in and go home. No, we, we go this way. We find elephant. Oh, so now you know where it is, eh? Hey? God, Blair, do you see? People say the elephant come round hut, come out of nowhere to pick him up and throw him down and stamp on him. Poor beggar. Oh, by God, flat as a pancake. They always say dead people look at peace. He doesn't. He looks frightened, terrified. Um... Does anyone know him, Inspector? I is there a family? They all look the same to me. They're not known. No. Indian fella. Coolie. 
They will come. It looks like he's been crucified. Well, at least we know there is an elephant out there somewhere. Nothing else short of a steamroller could have done that. Ah, spot on. Over there, in Paddy Field. Over there. Um, you know, Wilson, I don't really think a Winchester's going to do the job. Not if I actually have... Inspector, be a good fellow and cut along to the superintendent's office. Ask him for the biggest gun he's got. Uh, Understand? Yes. Then bring it back. Chop, chop. It's not my job to carry guns, sir. Oh, God, you won't have a bloody job if you don't shift your pins, old thing. Do you want to be responsible for what happens if Jumbo stamps on one of your bloody priests or whoever pays your bribe money? I will come back with gun, sir. It's a bit rough. Chap's only trying to do his job. Oh, see, none of the beggars wants any responsibility. God knows what would happen here if we didn't do it. I expect they'd sit around smoking opium all day. Well, they, they seem to have done quite well before we arrived. Perhaps he didn't like you talking to him in that way in front of his own people. Well, blast what he likes. It's none of his business. Well, come on, let's find this beast. I hope the rain starts soon. This heat is killing. Many a true word. See anything? Do you? Ah. Uh... No. Well, since it's a bloody elephant, I don't think either of us is likely to miss it. Oh, steady on. Ah, here comes your big gun, Blair. <laughs> oh, be careful. Mr. Superintendent has only five cartridges, sir. They say the elephant very angry now. Well, I'll be very angry if you don't clear that mob away. Very sorry, sir. Not possible. Too many people. Uh, looks like you've got an audience, Elephant Eric. All we need now is... Ah, oh, the main attraction at last. God, he's a big one. Oh, he's just... He's just pulling up bamboo. He's hungry, that's all. Even so, I'd load if I was you. Look, Wilson, I have no intention of shooting this animal. He's peaceful enough. Well, what if he changes his mind and charges us, eh? Fancy being stamped into the paddy, do you? Oh, come on, we can run away, can't we? Run? In front of them? Let them see a white man scuttling off with his tail between his legs. I hadn't really thought of that. There must be bloody near a couple of thousand of the beggars by now. It's a carnival, Blair. They love this sort of show and they do not expect to be disappointed. We all have our part to play, so be a good fellow and shoot the bloody elephant. The must has passed. He's no more dangerous than a cow. Well, you want them to laugh at you? Does that matter? How long have you been out here, man? Yes, of course. It's what we can't ever allow, isn't it? Steady the buffs. Oh. He's seen us. He knows you're there now. Go on. In the head, I suppose. Don't ask me. I've never done it before, but I shouldn't think he'll be going anywhere with a .557 Nitro Express in his noodle. standing. Don't look so steady anymore. A bit deflated, if you ask me. I didn't. Best hit him again, old man. Want to do a clean job, don't you? Oh, he's down, but not out. He looks a thousand years old. What am I doing, Wilson? You've got to admire his spirit. And you're doing the job. Go on. <sighs> That's it, that's it, I'm done. Not yet, Blair. Want to make sure, don't you? What the hell do you mean? That he's really finished before they start cutting him up. Oh, God. I don't understand. How is, how is he? How is he still? Better do something, or they will. Just give me the Winchester. <clears throat> Try the heart. The head didn't seem to do much good. Why don't you die? Oh, thank God. I haven't got any more shots left, Wilson. Come on. We'll go to the club. I need a bloody big drink.
Come in. Sit down, Blair. Thank you, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Drink? Uh, no, no, thank you, sir. Hmm. Please yourself. <coughs> As you do, young Blair. Beg your pardon, sir? This elephant business. Hmm? Rushing off like Tom Mix. A six-gun in every hand. Blasting away like... Like some damned desperado. I believe Tom Mix always played the hero, sir. What? Uh, Tom Mix, the, um... I'm not talking about some bloody Yankee cowboy. I'm talking about you, Blair. Yes, sir. About loyalty and loyalties, you see? I'm not sure I do, sir. Visiting Buddhist priests, lurking around the shadow theatre, that sort of thing. Native life. It's all very well to have a look-see, but we don't make a habit of it, hmm? I've seen it happen to men before when they come out here. They get slack, like that Robinson chappy. Resigns his position, marries a local tart, becomes a Buddhist and ends up addicted to opium. I, I did visit Mr Robinson. Mm. I know you did. I know what all my men do. That's why I'm in command. I know. And I'm concerned, Blair. This, uh... Hmm, this putting on a show for the locals. I, I don't understand, sir. The elephant was in must. Uh, something clearly had to be done. Captain Wilson and I pursued the beast. We talked to the local inspector. Yes, I have his report. A man had died, been killed. Some damn coolie. Well, I don't suppose he felt that way. I don't suppose he felt very much with a ten-ton elephant dancing the fandango on top of him, but that's not the point. No, sir? No, sir. Sure you won't have one? No. Thank you, sir. Look, I don't enjoy this any more than you do, but, you know... Well, well, let's get things straight, shall we? What do you see when you first arrive in this benighted hellhole? Um, uh, I remember... Yes, uh, as, as we came into port, the sea was still, so, so still, glassy green. And uh, there were turtles and sea snakes basking there, and a, a fleet of sampans oh. came racing out to meet us. It was like Lord Jim or Somerset. Oh, enough with the poetry. What do you see when you look at Rangoon from the ship's side? Oh, uh, the pagoda, of course, that golden roof catching the sun like it was... No, 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 not the bloody pagoda. You know what you see if you're an Englishman? Um. The Burma oil terminal. All those bloody great smoking chimneys. That's why we're here and why we've always been here. Forget the white man's burden. Forget empire or temples of glass-green water. We're here for one reason only. Commerce. And do you know what that means? Uh, shopkeeping, trade, that, that sort of... You see, there it is, Blair. You can't resist being clever, can you? Hmm? Thinking you're smarter than the rest of us. I, I, I don't think that at all, sir. You better not! Your hands are as dirty as anyone's out here. You were at the hanging the other day, hmm? Yes, sir. Anything to say? Got any pacifist statements you'd like to make? I've never pretended to be a pacifist, sir. <laughs> no doubt Jumbo would testify to that, what? <laughs> Look, what we do is keep the business going, see? And that means delivering a good dividend to the shareholders, being a safe pair of hands, never mind a little bit of dirt under the fingernails. Very good, sir, but I, I still don't see what this has to do with the elephant. It belonged to Steel Brothers. Timber? Logging? Exactly. Trade, as you so arrogantly put it. They are not pleased. One elephant? They, they must have thousands. But each one matters, Blair. It was an asset, and you do not allow your assets to be killed as a bloody spectacle. We can never let go our grip. Because once we do, once they start to see that it's possible that we aren't here forever by right of God, but only by right of the City of London... Hmm? Do you see now? Yes, sir, I do. We're already getting mobs of schoolboys shouting insults in the streets and Buddhist monks making a nuisance of themselves in that bloody peaceful way of theirs. Well, Steel Brothers are not happy. 
They want an example made. In short, they want you out of here. Posted to some backwater. Qatar, for instance. How can I matter that much to the biggest timber company in Burma? You cost them money. And every shilling matters, every sixpence. Read your Carlisle, Blair. He who has sixpence is lord over all men who have it not. He commands cooks to feed him, teachers to teach him, even kings to guard him, as long as the sixpences keep coming into his purse. As long as the sixpences keep coming into his purse. Now, get yourself packed and sorted, and I will shoot along a travel warrant. Be a change for you, at least. Get to see a bit more of the country, sir. I'm sorry to lose you in a way, Blair. Not quite what we usually get. I rather wondered how a chap from Eton ended up here. Oh, uh, it's... No matter. Off you go. Good luck. Baggage van. They go in the baggage van, Tam. You chop, chop, Porter. The train is leaving. Hurry. Hurry. You, lend a hand here. Lend a hand yourself. Bloody born a lazy Englishman. Look at bloody oh. Englishman. Too weak to carry baggy so. What do you say? Oh, you can go home, white man, and take all your white man friends with you. Uh, we had enough of you here. Go away. You go. We don't want you. You can watch your bloody language. You go now. Go away. We don't want you. Tell the white bastards to go home. All of them. Get out of my way. Get out of my country. Damn you, impudence. Get on board, bloody! Give me your hand! Come on! Come on! Had a wee bit of a narrow escape there. Yes, uh, yes, I did. They, uh, out of nowhere, it was horrible. You I, think they meant your harm? I think they wanted to trample me. Underfoot, crush me. Look, I, I, I'm terribly sorry. I, I, I'm in the wrong compartment. I, I should go and find my... Uh, I have a warrant. I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry. Um, I think you should stay right where you are. Drink this. Oh, Here. Go on. Thank you. I really must find my compartment. What's the hurry? Aren't you going all the way? Hmm? Qatar. Well, don't fret. I heard you on the station telling the porter, that's all. Nothing mysterious going on. New posting? Uh, yes, you, 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 you could say so. Look, Mr. Rum... What do you say to no names? No pack drill, eh? Two travellers met upon a journey. Sounds like something out of Stevenson. It's the, the Suicide Club. <coughs> Wonderful. Uh, the Ebb Tide. Uh, the beach at Falesa. So you're a reader? Uh, well, we, we all read out here. We can't wait for the latest novels to arrive from home. Then should I say a thoughtful reader, not the constant nymph sort of stuff, <laughs> which is perhaps a little strange for a policeman. I did actually rather enjoy the constant nymph, but uh, yes, I, 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 I do read. Jack London, uh, French writers, Flaubert, Anatole France. My God. What's the matter? I'm sitting here in this carriage talking about literature as if... as if I hadn't just beaten that boy. Bit of Jekyll and Hyde, eh? Did you mean him harm? I think at that moment... I could have killed him. He's not the first Burman or Indian you've beaten, I'd wager. No, no of course not. Prisoners. Well, how could I be a policeman and do my job? You know what they're like. What are they like? Evil-hearted little beasts. No, I, 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 I don't mean that. I mean, I, I do mean it, but I, I, um, I don't... You feel it, but you don't like the fact that you do. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I, I think so. And besides, they can be evil-hearted little beasts. Yes. I've been out here a good few years, and I know a good few Burmans, Indians, Chinese, Sh well, you name it. And they're all of them fine people. But bring on colonialism and something bad happens to the best of men. But that's enough of that. I don't think you did any harm to that young fellow, apart from bruising his pride. I looked into his face. He was angry. 
not cowed or frightened. He didn't like me. No, not, not just me. He, d he didn't like any of us. He, the look of pure hatred on his face. Do you see that? I see it very often. I'm a school teacher, ah. an educator. Oh, yes, the British authorities do actually have a policy of native education. Let's teach them how lucky they are that we came and appropriated their country and are running it so much more efficiently, so much more profitably than they ever could. After all, if we don't explain it clearly, they might wonder why all the profits from their natural resources flow to the city, to the city of, of London. Bravo! For then they might start looking at other folk who decided to take history into their own hands. What is it Mr. H.G. Wells says? The walls that surround us appear like concrete, but once we dare to burst through, we discover that, after all, they are only paper. And we don't want that to happen, do we? All sounds a bit, uh, a bit bullshit to me. It all sounds like simple common sense to me. You know, the way you look at a thing and say to yourself, it's not right. I remember being a wee boy put to my lessons back in Aberdeen. We had a fine big globe in the classroom. And I can see myself now slowly spinning it and thinking, there's too much red on this thing. Too much red. <clears throat> you can leave and find your own compartment if this is all too bolshy for you, buddy. Yet, yet you came out to Burma. Why? If you ever visit Aberdeen, go down to the harbour and you'll see, on the hard, a roundhouse. The harbour master's office, where the gallery runs around the top. My uncle used to take me up there so I could watch the ships leaving port. Steaming, sometimes still sailing even, at that date. And his job was to call out to the masters. Whither bound? Whither bound? And they would answer. Bombay, Rangoon. San Francisco, Yokohama, the whole world. And I got a yen to see it one day for myself. The things that make us what we are. Perhaps. That change our lives. Perhaps where we go depends on who we are and where we came from. Oh, <laughs> uh, it, it's a long story. You're a young man. I doubt it's that long. Well, uh, I, I suppose I, I was a little snob, like most boys of my age. And your class, I dare say? Pretty much. But no worse than the other boys of my class and age. Aye. Uh, prep school, public school, can't say I cared for either. Good schools? Uh, uh, pretty good, as these things are counted. Eaten. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, it, it depends on how these things are counted. In my experience, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Indeed. It wouldn't be of much use, the numbers, if you couldn't be sure of them. Do you see? Yes, well, I, I suppose so, but then... Well, then, I was as sure of what I believed as, as I was of the numbers and the letters of the alphabet. England. God bless the king and everyone in his rightful place, men with big moustaches and sticks and Kipling and, and uh, Kitchener... Edward Elgar, Gilbert and Sullivan and... Or he himself has said <laughs> it. And, and it's great greatly to his credit that he is an Englishman. That he is... Yeah, but then I stopped. I stopped being sure of anything at all. Ah, as my old pal Sherlock Holmes would say, I suspect there's a woman in the case? Yes, a girl. There generally is with young fellows, I find. Beautiful, was she? Intelligent, lively, made you feel... Well, she made me feel terrible oh. in the end. I always thought she was so tender-hearted when she cried over the animals we boys shot at with our 22s. and Then she abandoned me to this bloody country. All hope denied. You wanted to marry her, I dare say. Bring her out here. That's what I thought. What did she think? Well, I thought that she would... Well, I don't suppose I knew what she thought, really. I wrote to her once I got here. I, I wrote lots, uh, almost once a week. Telling her what she was missing? Telling her how awful it all was. And? She stopped writing. Clever lassie. 
I've decided that I don't really understand them, women. Got a mistress here, have you? Hmm? Little brown girl. Always strikes me the native women are just right for new old school chaps. Look like pretty boys, but never fret. She's all right where it counts. I rather resent that. You've never had a, what do they call it, a pash? A crush on a younger boy at that school of yours? Huh? Being honest? Well, that, that, that's different. Oh, I dare say. And now you have your Burma girl who cooks your meals, washes your socks and peels your banana. And you don't have to go to all the trouble of understanding her either. How old were you when you came out? When your girl dumped you? Well, I, I was coming anyway, really. Uh, barely 20. Burma is my university's. Have you read him? Hmm? What? Maxim Gorky. Uh, no, not yet. I, I mean to. That there, there's so much to read. You should. But why Burma, anyway? Well, my, my father insisted. He was in India. District officer. He, he thought it was the only thing to do, and after Jacintha, there was nothing I could find in myself that said otherwise. All right, then. Let me be a bit more specific. <clears throat> why are you here on this train, which we both know is going nowhere? Well, it, it's going to Qatar. Which, as far as an ambitious young policeman might be concerned, is nowhere. Are you, uh, questioning me? Are you questioning me? After all, you're the one with the notebook. Oh, well, I, I rather hope one day to be... Well, um, no, that's not quite true. Well, go on. When I was a boy, I always thought I would be a writer. Then I came out here and I decided... No, this country decided I wouldn't be a writer. After all, I'd do my job and things would go on somehow. I really wanted that, to be like everyone else here until... Well, until... And so here we are, two unknown travellers. Whither bound, my friend? Whither bound? I don't know whither, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you about the thing, the thing that, that made me think all this is standing on its head. I'll tell you about the day. I killed an elephant. That's it, I'm done. Not yet, Blair. Want to make sure, don't you? What the hell do you mean? That he's really finished before they start cutting him up. After we left, it took the elephant half an hour to die. They were cutting into him long before that. He'd spent his life working for them, for us. A great, strong, majestic animal, and in the end, he was just an afternoon's entertainment. A few cuts of meat, a bit of ivory. Maybe I'm being sentimental, and it won't matter a damn who shot that elephant, and it's all history. We don't really stand a chance, do we? of changing anything. You know, sometimes I feel it'll just go on and on like the bloody jungle and cut out a clearing and in weeks, days, the forest takes it back. The, the creepers and vines strangle what men have built. Everything rots, gets eaten, gets used again to do the same pointless thing. It's, it's appalling, like a nightmare. Evolution, inevitability. History, the jungle, inevitability, eternal recurrence, call it what you will. I don't think it exists. Not as you see it, laddie. History doesn't make men. Men make history. Men make mistakes. Coming to Burma was mine. Unless you make something out of it, rather than letting it make a failure out of you. 
How about that? I think we're arriving at our destination. We must have talked the night away. I think I did most of the talking. Um, perhaps we'll see each other in Qatar. It's a small community. I'm sure everybody knows everybody. Oh, I won't be around for long. Always moving on. That's me. What about you? Uh, well, for four years I've been doing a job I've come to believe is wrong. I hate it. But more than that, I hate what I've become doing it. I, I know I have to get out. Out of Burma? Out of everything. Get away from any place where one man dominates another. Maybe I should try and go amongst the people. Go native? Mm -hmm. Smoke opium? I doubt that would work. You'd always be a stranger. Couldn't be otherwise. Then perhaps failure is the only honest path that's left for us to take. I don't think so. You know, you don't have to be in Burma to make that journey. Surely it's there on your own doorstep. All around you. Hidden in plain sight. I, I, I don't see... Well, of course you do, laddie. If only you look. I'd take a small bet you know more about the Burmans than you do about, say, the miners in Britain. Or the unemployed who tramp your roads. Or all those who make your life so easy and comfortable. You talked about this country being your university. Maybe you were wrong. And your university was always right there outside your garden gate. Well, laddie, it was a pleasure making the journey in your company. Oh, and why not take a peek at the 11th thesis? Might prove interesting. The 11th what? Goodbye now. Wait. First time for the spark, is it? Uh, yes, yes. How did you know? It's clear, isn't it? Huh? You ain't one of us. Well, I'm, uh, I'm down and out. You're as wrong as a nine bob note, mate. Got any right now? What? Cash, money. Eightpence. See? See what? Well, don't know your ass from your elbow. You get seven days for trying to get in with Rhino or Backy. Got any Backy? No. Because he'll kick you out at two in the morning if he finds you got Backy. Who will? The tramp major. That bastard will throw you out for looking at him wrong. It's for indigent, Nancy. Indigent. You ain't indigent if you've got a penny and a fag in your pocket. I'll need to be careful then. Well, you need someone to wipe your ass for you. <laughs> what you know ain't what a babe in arms knows. You keep a civil tongue in your head. Don't look him in the eye. Don't do nothing to make him look at you. And bury your eye now. Find a hole, huh? Hide it. Pick it up tomorrow. What if somebody steals it? You mean, what if I steal it? <laughs> then it gets stolen, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you don't you worry. You can trust me. Party man I am. Party? What, what party? Go on, bury it. I'll keep an eye. Communist Party. Oh, a member since before the war, since before the revolution. Can't the party help you? <laughs> well, it's got enough to do. And besides, the drink, you see, the drink takes hold of me. It does. Uh, the party discipline goes right out right the window. <laughs> Sorry, mate. How will I know where it is? The, uh, the, the rhino? Oh, leave the marker. Right, there, there, that, that, that tin. Right. Use that, stamp it in the mud. That's it, stamp, stamp it flat. Stamp it in. <coughs> Looks like a crucified man. <coughs> Looks more like Fray Bentos bully beef to me. <laughs> oh... Friday tea. We always used to have that on account of me and the wife being Catholic. Before we joined the party. Oh, I know it sounds daft, but it mattered to us then. It wasn't just making a gesture. Friday tea. Fray Bentos, corned beef with mustard. Coleman's mustard. Yellow, remember? Remember how yellow that mustard was? Mm, and a tin with edges so sharp you could cut a conservative's throat before he knew to stop lying to you. 
Oh, some times I, I think I'll give it all up for a corned beef sandwich with mustard on it. Uh, so of course I ain't got nothing to give up. <laughs> you, you were married? Uh, yeah, well, she left me. Don't blame her. Good comrade she was. It was the drink, see? Always been the drink with me. Went off with a bloody milkman. He was a methody. That hurt, that did. Truth to tell, they kicked me out after that. The, the, the drink, you see. Keep it out of the party. Always been... Oh. oh, hold on, hold on. Looks like they're opening up. Come on, want to get a good billet, don't you? You stick by me, mate. Stick by Comrade Ted. Yeah, Ted, Ted, when you were in the party, did you read a lot? Oh, I've read it all, mate. Loved reading, still do. Did you ever hear of something called the 11th Thesis? All right, you lot. You knows the rules. No money, no baggy, and no bloody lip. And any bastard craps the bed, I'll have his guts for garters. The 11th Thesis, Ted, do you know what it is? Uh, oh, my, the 11th Thesis. Every, everyone knows that. What is it? Oh, Karl Marx, in it. The thesis on fuel back. Move it. But I ain't got all night. What is it? <laughs> hey? Oh, oh, come on, come on. He, he locks the door. Once he locks the door, that's it. <laughs> the 11th Thesis, Ted. Oh, hurry up, mate. He won't wait. He never waits. God and the tramp major, they ain't got a farthing's worth of patience between the both of them. Come in, sir. <laughs> Wait for me, sir. The winter of 1929. I was 27 years old, and I was at last beginning to know what I wanted to do in this world. In 1845, the 27-year-old Karl Marx wrote a series of theses against the work of his one-time colleague Ludwig Feuerbach, mainly uh, an attack on German idealism, but the last, the eleventh thesis, states, Up until now, philosophers have only interpreted the world. The point is to change it. I thought my path was set and I, I only had to go along it to reach the promised land of justice for all. I should have known. Nothing is forever. It was never going to be that easy. In The Real George Orwell, Burma... Eric Blair was played by Joseph Milson, Jacintha Buddicombe by Sophie Roberts, Wilson by Joseph Klosker, The Inspector by Ernest Ignatius, The Burmese Youth by Aman Kiamani, The Man on the Train by Derek Riddell, and Ted by Alan Raglan. The Real George Orwell Burma was written by Mike Walker and was a BBC Cymru Wales production directed by Kate McCall.